Right. Uh, good afternoon, viewers of AVG News. Uh, today, we continue with our interviews. You will remember that uh, next year, we are heading for elections. Zimbabwe is heading for elections, general elections, let me say. And a lot is expected out of that election, maybe out of desperation or uh, because of the contestations that are there. Today, we are joined by a well-decorated politician, political analyst, and academic uh, from Zimbabwe. His name is Dr. Zeb Michael, Maxwell Shumba. Many of you would remember him as one of the advisors to former, or let me say founding MTC president, uh, the late uh, Mr. Mok and Richard Tsangrai. Doctor, welcome to this show and please introduce yourself add to what I, I didn't mention out there. No, thank you so much, Mr. Nue. It's a pleasure and an honor to be with you to discuss matters of Zimbabwe, matters which are at my heart. Yes, I indeed has been in the Zimbabwean politics for a long time. I'm a founding member of the MDC. I've worked with past and current MDC leaders, people who are even in the CCC. I worked with them because I was the founding chairman of MDC North America, which again then turned to MDC USA. So I understand the political situation in Zimbabwe and it's a pleasure to be discussing with you today. Thank you very much, Doc. Um, can you tell us how long did you advise Morgan Sangerai? <clears throat> yeah, I, I started advising Morgan in an unofficial capacity in 2013, uh, when I joined his team, it was previously, I used to work very closely with Mr. Changrai as the chairperson of MDC USA and MDC North America. So I always had a say in how MDC was moving forward as the chair. And then when, I stepped down being a chair. I started advising Morgan in, informally from 2012, 2013, it, 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 we had, my, my role had increased. In 2014, I was appointed officially. In 2015, I stepped down. Uh, would you share why you decided to step down? Yeah, I think fundamentally, MDC was challenged. And the things people are noticing, people like me started noticing them way back, that most of the people in MDC were fortune seekers. And they would tell people, we are here to, for change to change your lives. And I didn't see that in them. I, I just saw greedy people who were trying to make a fortune out of politics what we call political entrepreneurship. People who are taking politics as a business. And I just stepped down because I didn't want to lie to the people. Uh, do we have any specific, are we at liberty to maybe mention a few names of these kinds of people that you're talking about, people who are out there to seek a fortune? I won't say a name, but if you, if you just, it's, so, it's very easy to move. Yes. Look at their lifestyles. All those people in MDC, people in CCC. Back then when we started MDC, most of these people had nothing. And they never worked anywhere. And they are rich. And, and some went to the GNU with nothing. And within a year in the GNU, they were, you know, flourishing business people. How, how do you, if you're a civil servant, how do you become a, you know, a flourishing business person in a failing economy just because you're a politician? It, it's, it, it, you don't need me to name names. Just look at them. They're last. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is really understandable. Uh, when, the, when the MDC came on board, it was a combination of the working class, student unions, and civil society. And a lot of hope was placed on them because of these motive forces behind them. Where would you say 
the wheels begin to come off. Uh, the GNU exposed the real intentions of MDC because for, for some, some went into the GNU, some did not. And those who went into the GNU provided the window of, uh, through which the others would see, so see them. And I know I was privileged uh, to be visiting M MDC constituencies during the GNU and also our own ministers. And MDC lost the rural constituencies because all the MPs were just focused on the GNU improving their lifestyles. So those who were outside the GNU could see clearly that what we're saying at rallies was not true. People were just looking after themselves. So when the GNU ended, and I think you know, 2013 started the real problems of MDC. Because now the people were questioning uh, whether MDC truly meant what they were saying. And, and that's where the problem began. And I would advise, in fact, for your information, if you don't know, yes, there's a party called Build Zimbabwe. Yes. Build Zimbabwe is a, an entity I found okay. in, in 2013, which I even invited Noah Majika because I was telling in 2013, after we lost the election, I founded that soon after the election. It was called Build Zimbabwe, Zokawiamwe, meaning that come back home to the people because the leaders of MDC had strayed away from MDC. And I said, now people are angry. Let's focus on things they can you know, relate to. Building Zimbabwe means building the people. And you, can, you can't build the people when you are not with them. Yes. So you need to come back to the people. That's what we founded them. I invited no man you got to that. But that's beside the point. The point was the MDC leaders straight and showed their true colors that it was not about the people, but it was about improving their lives. Even Morgan himself. Yes. This is, there are many things which people don't say in public. His lavish lifestyle. Yes. And the current leaders, just look at them. I, I would want you to do a research because that's what you're supposed to do as journalists. Yes. You see lifestyles of people changing. You see the metrally say, oh, there's an PF this, an PF that. No. How do, how do you say Zan PF is corrupt today and tomorrow you are in court defending them? Yes, uh, you've given us a challenge there to, to investigate their lifestyles, which is something that yes. we're going to do. Uh, and then, Doc, you are talking about yes. uh, the MTC losing the vote or the confidence of the people. But uh, after every election, uh, I'm not saying they are wrong, after every election, they are complaining of rigging. Uh, now you are giving another perspective. No, now, what, what plays a bigger role between the two, between the alleged rigging and the MTC pulling away from the people. What would you say contributes more to the MTC continuing to lose, especially the rural vote? Uh, MTC won 2008, square. MTC lost 2018. MTC lost 2018. Uh, yes, in 2013, you remember, Morgan wanted to go to court to challenge and he did not uh, proceed. But he, he realized we'd lost in the rural areas. I predicted the reason why Morgan met me is an official his advisor because I told him in 2012 that we we're going to lose elections 60-40. And it turned out like that. And he said, Doc, you're right. In 2018, people say, oh, 
uh, MTC was rigged. How do, you, how do you get rigged when you fail to field candidates in Mashoran Central and Mashoran West? Yeah. How, do, how do you win? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, <as> a title. <laughs> uh, and then, Doc, uh, we have seen yeah. since 2000, the MTC is around 22 years old now, uh, notwithstanding the number of factions and the mutation just recently. Um, what would you say has led mostly to the split? We saw the split in 2005, which some insiders say it was uh, more tribal than anything else. We saw against the, a split again in 2013, uh, what would you attribute, attribute this please to? I think in 2013, they split to uh, the RRTZ of uh, Elton Mangoma, then Tendai Bitis uh, PDP, and then after the elections of 2018, we saw Monzora Chamisa splitting again. That was after the split again with Kupe. What would you say is central to this split? Is it tribalism? Is it greed? Is it uh, ideological differences? What is it? There's no ideology in MDC. So take out the ideology. They even say we don't have ideology. Ideal, uh, MDC, you need to know that once you become a hope for the people, that attracts money, that attracts resources. So it's the control of resources which is at play. Because whoever uh, is president and sector general, I, I don't know if you knew this, that the constitution of the MDC before 2014 put control of the finances into the treasurer, deputy treasurer, and, and sector general. Yes. The president did not even, was not even a signatory. So the first split and second split was because of that. Okay. Because the sector general he had control of everything. He could move monies in the president. He had no visibility to that. He could say the party does not have money and the president has no visibility to that. So once you have two power centers, one political power center and the other which is resourced and financed is another power center, you are, you are creating the, the, the areas for splits. That's where the split starts. And you can see 20, 2005, the first split was between the Secretary General yes. and the President. The second split, Secretary General and Treasurer and the President. Yes. Because it, it, people, a, a faction of the, of, of the party would, would go to the Secretary General because yes. he, he has money. And another function for the people who wanted political positions would go to the president. And now there was this friction. Yes. And in 2014, it was addressed. And it was one of the things we identified as causing splits. And now the president is a signatory. But then as the signatory, you can, you can tell now that those who feel the president is the political power and also the, source, the financial power, controlling power. They are the ones now who splits away and form something. Yes. And now, uh, then we saw another split just after the, the death of Morgan Songirai. Uh, we saw just before his death, he appointed two deputies, uh, Nelson Chamisa and the Mutsuri. Then Togozani Kupe began to do whatever she did. And there was another split just before the elections. What do you make of that split? Who would you say was genuinely uh, aggrieved about this? This year, the constitution, which was not followed. And unfortunately, Zimbabwe ne never want to learn. Uh, when Zani PF was violating the national constitution back then, people never cared. You know, I remember 2000, 1985 elections, probably less than 40% of the population went to, to vote. Those people never cared. 
and Zanubia did whatever it wanted with the country. The same applies with the MDC. It's, it's, they, they like popularity. So if someone is popular, he doesn't do no wrong. He's allowed to violate the constitution because it's popular. So if the constitution of MDC had been followed, I can tell you MDC could have won elections or it might not, but it was going to be competitive. Yes. And I tell you, if at the fall of the constitution, probably Mr. Misa could still be the president. And, but uh, they did not okay. follow the constitution and it, now we had those who, who gyrated to populism and those who wanted to follow the constitution. constitution. And that's the split you, you saw. Yes, and, and what is Swangirai's role in causing this split? Because you say the MTC has a constitution. He yes. is the one who appointed uh, the two vice president. We ended up one of them fighting for, for power with the vice president who was elected. Does he, uh, did he have the power to appoint? Because we need to be quite clear about this before we go further. Did he have the power to appoint uh, the vice presidents that he ended up appointing? Uh, no. He didn't. It was expediency because, you know, there's a lot of dynamics which is unhealthy and toxic in MGC. And as a president, you you, be, you, you try, you know, if you have, you've got a rocking boat, you do your best to, to keep it <laughs> from sinking. That's what he was doing. Because there were uh, behind the scenes uh, frictions dividing the party. Okay. Because remember, remember, Mr. Chamisa was the immediate uh, organizing secretary. Yes. And Mr. Muzuri was the predecessor. And the way, I don't know if you know this about the MDC or even Zani. Yes. Uh, the most influential position outside president and secretary general is organizing secretary. Yes, yes. Was you 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 know you the the the, the power of a fish is in the water. <laughs> organizing secretary is the person who puts structures in place. Yes. So you have people who were loyal to the first organizing secretary and and others loyal to the second organizing sector. People never look at that. <laughs> yes. That was the friction. It was not the friction. It was not a friction between Muzuri and Chamisa, but it was friction in the within the grassroots. Okay. So would you say then Swangirai was justified to try and control this friction by elevating these two to the position of deputy president? You see, unfortunately, sometimes in politics, you have to do what what <laughs> what works at that time. Yeah, yeah. that's that's why I, I'll tell you. Uh, people need to really identify it at what stage they are uh, when they are in a political situation like uh, Zimbabwe. Are you fighting or you are competing? Yes. If you're competing, then you can stick to your constitution. If you're fighting, you, you go by the temperature. <laughs> and what's happening on the battleground, you, you, you can't say our constitution says that the commander cannot go uh, carry, carry an arm and go fight personally. Yes. When you know you are down to three people, the commander mm -hmm. is also to go. So the challenge with them is we talk of constitution, constitutionalism in the same vein as, and, and we say we are in the trenches. Yes. If you're in the trenches, you're fighting. And when you're fighting, don't put, don't bind yourself. Because, right, you need the people to fight. And those people are divided because they have split loyalties. Yes. And then you say, my constitution does not allow me to bring these people together. You turn your hands. Yes. So, so, so in the struggle, 
if you are in the struggle, then no, define rules for your struggle. Make provisions to change things midway. When then the struggle is over, then you know going forward you're going to compete. And then you have a constitution of governance. You are talking of a governance when you're fighting. Yes. That's, that's the problem. You know, I want to follow the rules. I want to follow the constitution. But if all constitution says the president cannot be a signatory and the president really wants to go to Chivo yes. and, support, and, and, and support a candidate or support someone who's in trouble, and, and he has to go through the Secretary General and Treasurer. But if he, he had the power, he could say, hey guys, release money because tonight I want to go to chief. Yes. Tangere could not do that. His hands were bound, were tied. I used to raise money for him. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I became so close to Morgan because we would raise money for presidential programs. Because the Secretary General will tell him there's no money. Hey, that's tight. And then the merry go round continues again. We see yes. towards Annie Cooper towards the 2018 elections. They split, mm -hmm. they go to court. The court says she's the legal uh, uh, acting president. They go their separate ways. Now she's back with Chamisa and she's telling us that Chamisa is the only hope that Zimbabwe has. Does this also speak to a lack of principle on her part? Yeah, it's political expediency. I told you from the beginning, <laughs> that's why I left MDC. And yeah. I told you, you, investigate these guys, you know. <laughs> you don't yeah. need to get what kind of people are there. And now the but party is, is, is you are not part. My disappointment, you journalists, you're not doing your part. You are, yes, yes. You hear, you hear Tokozani Kupe says, so-and-so is the only hope of Zimbabwe. Your, your, your role is not to cover that. Yes. Your role is to investigate whether what she says is political expedience or it's true that, that so and so is the real hope. You ask questions. Where is she basing that from? Yes. It's crowds, <laughs> but we have crowds since 2000. Yes. We've been pregnant, but we never became the government. What <laughs> she has He's seen the way he dressed, he's seen the way people loved him. But Mokan Tangre was loved by the people. Yes. But he never became president. He's seen the economic blueprint for it. Have you seen it yourself? No. <laughs> so so your role should be, you know, I, I know I respect you a lot because I know you very well. Yes. Your role is to bring into the open the facade that so-and-so is the hope of the people. From where? where? Where has he gotten the experience from? What has he done? Because I know for sure of GNU, if you, the US had not come in and show up or support financially, MDC was collapsing. M MDC, I will tell you, we went to the government with no experience. Yes. But they were telling people we will be the next government. Right now, okay. Have you ever asked your question? Uh, when, when people win elections, the top leaders should become ministers, right? Yes. When people win elections, the top ministers become what? The top leaders become what? Ministers. Yes. If you ever ask it, what is the top leadership of the CCC? <laughs> president yeah, we, is a lawyer. We, Vice we, president we, is a lawyer. <laughs> Vice second president is a lawyer. A spokesperson is a lawyer. This is a lawyer. This is a lawyer. So you're going to have a government of lawyers. Yeah, we, 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 will, talk, we will try and get them to talk to us. It's been very difficult because Apparently, I'm considered one of the people who are not supposed to, to be interviewed. I want to interview uh, Nelson Chamisa himself, but I'll keep on trying. And I hope that he's going to watch this and avail himself because 
those who are around him don't want to give us a chance. But um, then the party has mutated now to what they call Triple C. And they say that this is a new party. Fine, they've got new uniform, I mean, a new regalia, a new color, new slogans, a new leader. Do you buy into the story that this is a mutated party? No. I mean, that this is a new party. No. <laughs> Why not? Well, you know, uh, you can investigate. You know when something is new and when it's not new. Okay, let, yeah. let, let us leave that. Uh, now, yes. enough if you of have a house and you paint it, if you have a house and you <laughs> paint it was white and you paint it yellow, is it a new house? No, 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 it's not. It's not. So, I, you, you, you ask me things with obvious answers. <laughs> No, we because we've been accused. We've been accused in the past, so we want to get no. this opinion, which is not ours, because we might be wrong. Because we usually are wrong. Here's the thing. Yes. Uh, indicators indicators for a dictatorship uh, are very. Yes. When people don't want to be questioned, then you know there is a problem. Yes. When people start attacking those percent facts, there's a problem. When people attack those who are even saying things incorrectly, there's a problem. There will be a error. Because you you can err. You can say things wrong because the way they've been given to you. The part I need. Yes. If you say something wrong, we'll come to you and educate. Yes. And then you will give you an opportunity to listen to us so that you'll be able to correct it. We don't threaten you. Yes. We do not intimidate you. We don't silence you. There is a lot of bullying on social media. Yes. Toxicity comes from ZANU-PF and comes from the opposition. What sort of warp comes with people who are toxic? What sort of hope comes with people who verbally abuse others? We may disagree. Someone might not take a bath, but that someone is a right to speak. Yes. There's no reason to link or shut up because of the audience. You don't take a bath. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No. The people who say us should not take the president of a country. The people who do that will be fought from day one. You need to know. Zimbabwe, when you win elections, all other people do not disappear. Yes. You need them. They are so there's a lot of naivete in the people who's, who think they're obviously they are going to be the next government just because people are angry. Where do you think Zanubia will go when they win? On, on day one. Zanubia will be there. Yes, yes, yes. Zanubia has got the knowledge, as we discovered during the GNU, on how government operates. Yes. You have all these people who are just talking, who, who don't know nothing about government. The reason why sometimes they don't want to come to you, because they are shallow. Yes. They know they can't go far. Okay, so, and uh, um, we'll talk about ZANU PF. I think we're going to, uh, in the interest of time, we are sure. going to have to catch this uh, interview in the next three minutes. But now sure. we are going to talk about ZANU PF. Uh, I thought we should dedicate because our our aim is to bring you on board. Every if you, I mean, depending on your schedule, to bring you to this channel at least once a week because I've interviewed you, we've spoken a lot, and I know that I've, you, you've got this insight into Zimbabwean politics, which I respect so much, having spoken to you, but very few people out there know about Dr. Uh, Zeb Maxwell Shumba. Some of, you, some of them know you uh, as president of Zimfest, which we are going to yes. talk about. We're going to dedicate a, a, a program, maybe next week, to talking about Zimfest. This one is about the MTC because our aim is to view and review every party, party by party, with your knowledge, 
poking holes into their ideologies, poking holes into their policies, poking holes into things that they are doing wrong. And yes. we'll also talk about ZANU PF at some point. Uh, but yes. before we, we wind off, uh, the MTC, when they were still the MTC, supported the, the coup, they were still under Morgan Swangirai. They called Zimbabwe out there to support ZANU PF in the coup, I spoke to you about that when I was writing a, a, a story about that. You gave me what you gave me. Then after Mokin Tsangrai's death, when ZANU PF decided to go it alone, we had the same MTC which supported the coup, crisscrossing the world, saying that uh, there is a legitimacy crisis in Zimbabwe because <laughs> the people who are there got in there through illegal means and we saw them. Nelson Chamisa as president of, as the resulted president who had to contest uh, Emerson Nangakwa. We saw him now idolizing Robert Mugabe, even inviting him on board to, 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 to support him and even vote for him. What would you say is the reason behind that? You remember what I started with? The yes. reason why I left? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to work with opportunists. These are the political opportunism. They were they were played because those guys who were leading coup promised Morgan Changrai and his team positions in the new dispensation. And these these guys reneged on their promise because they had to Yeah. These guys got what they wanted and you know, all you you had uh, illegitimate this. This was just people were angry that they were used. Yeah. So it's a case of if they put in the positions, they were not going to criticize this dispensation because they don't have a soul. MGC, CC do not have soul. Yes, it, this is what you see. They will sell their brother. They, Mukabe was a dictator to them. And Mukabe became a friend to them. Yes. <laughs> because they do not have a soul. They do not have an ideology. They don't have principles. You know, people like me. Yes. The moment I started criticizing them, I was accused of being CIO or Zanipia. Yes, that is the usual They insult. don't have a soul. <laughs> How can I be CIO Zanu PF when I'm advising the president? How can CIO and Zanu PF get to that level? Because you'll be a stupid party if you allow a CIO to advise your president. Yes, yes. They are not even embarrassed to say that. They are not even embarrassed to see the idiots in that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, and then, Doc, just uh, as a last question. Yes. Um, yes. But before you do a question, I want to, I want yes. to tell you something. On your platform, remind me. Go out with your question. I want to share with you something which is happening, which is very important. Okay. Well, uh, perhaps you should go because we are left with uh, three minutes, and I yes. would want okay. to, to silence you on that. Yes. Good. Thank you. Uh, now we're talking about Zimbabwe. We know Zimbabwe has got economic challenges, which yes. are uh, Zan PF governance. Yes. I'm talking to you right now from Zurich. Yes, there was a, there is an industry conference, and I am here, uh, both you in the Western world, as a person who is renowned in the industry. Yes. I was able to use my influence to get a delegation from the RSC come. I was able to use my influence to get a delegation from Zambia, the new government come. It has been an honor to be with the leaders of DRC and the leaders of Zambia. The Minister of uh, Trade and Industry spoke yesterday from DRC and the Minister of Mines uh, spoke yesterday yes. at the same forum. And when they were speaking, uh, what was silent there was Zimbabwe. We're talking about the minerals in the region. And it will be DRC Zambia. 
And I told them that once Zimbabwe is sorted, then we have a powerful block who can be first world, DRC, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and then Malawi. Yes. It has been an honor to gain the respect of those two governments. And they acknowledge that through their ministers. Yes. The, the role I've played. Unfortunately, it's a role I cannot play for Zimbabwe today. Yes, yes. But it contrasts me with all other opposition leaders. When people say they are the hope, what is the color of hope? <laughs> I, this, what I'm doing here in Zurich, Switzerland, is the color of hope. Yes. Someone who understands, someone who has networks, someone, when you're advising your fellow Africans and they listen, it means you have what it takes to be a leader of another country. Yes. And you can, you, you, I, I think the minister, is, the minister of DRC has left and the minister of Zambia is leaving tonight. I could have organized you to interview them, but I will be able to organize to interview the presidents from DRC, the presidency from Zambia because of the network I've created with this. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Doc. We will hold you to that one, to the promise for, to connect us with these uh, presidents. Uh, let us continue engaging, but please do avail yourself to the other interviews that we're going to hold because we hope to have you here every week uh, so sure. that we can at least uh, get these insightful uh, points that you always have, Talk. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.